boy, oh boy. <laughs> it's finally here. I've waited literally 15 minutes for this thing to arrive in this totally unscripted, totally factual event. No, wait, no. What the? No, no. Aha! So here is my new module. I'm very excited to have it. And let's find a place for it somewhere in the modular system that I have here. Built this in another episode of Leo Makes. You can watch it here on the link. And oh boy. Okay, I'm all out of space. Okay, but no problem, no problem. I have I have a whole other case here that I also built on this channel, but this one's also out of space. Oh man, okay, well what am I gonna do? This beautiful module, wait, where is this gonna go? I, I, there's, there is literally no place in this system, not a single HP of space remaining for, for this module. Clearly there's no solution to this problem, I should just give up and go do something else with the rest of the day because wait 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 i have an idea i have an idea okay let's say this module got rotated 90 degrees i i want you know what it'd be so amazing if we could get this thing to fit in here but how does one make a bracket to hold this thing here i mean if only there was just some way to like print a part. It doesn't need to be that strong. It could just be printed out of some kind of plastic, you know, like uh... maybe with a machine like that, maybe a 3D printer would, would be able to print a part that would make this thing fit into that case. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna get this printer to do my bidding here, so. What? Huh. Interesting, but no. Okay, let's try that again. What? No. No, man, no. But kind of cute. Okay, let's try this one last time here. Ah, perfect. Aha, look at this. Look at this beautiful part. This was made in a matter of minutes and it will hold my rack plumber module exactly like this. Hey folks, it's Leo. Welcome back to the channel. So a few months ago, the people at Creality reached out and said, hey, we like what you do on your channel. We think it'd be great if you had a 3D printer. So can we send you a 3D printer and you can use it to make whatever you want on your channel? Now normally I say no to stuff like this, but little did they know I already owned a Creality printer. I had the Ender 3 V2, I bought it at the beginning of the pandemic so I could get some first-hand experience with 3D printing and really understand the ins and outs of it. And I really like that printer, I think it's good value for money and I would have no problem vouching for that product. And so I said, yeah, go ahead, send it to me, I will play with it and I will make some cool parts like this one. We see that the Rack Plumber is mounted in this holder. There are sliding hex nuts in the back and it's all screwed together. It's very robust and it's dimensionally accurate. We'll get to that later in the video. And overall, I'm very happy with the S1. Um, I know this isn't supposed to be a review, but my thoughts are that if you are thinking about getting a 3D printer for doing the kind of stuff I do on this channel, like prototyping, building hacky, weird instruments, uh, fixing things, that kind of stuff, a 3D printer is a really, really good tool to have in the shop. The Ender 3 S1 is a fantastic choice. It costs more than the base model Ender 3 V2, which is still available and you can still buy it. But I strongly recommend going for the S1 version if you can swing it financially. I say this because of a couple of things. There's auto bed leveling using their CR Touch touch probe, which is something that I find uh, extremely useful. It's, it's something that is a must have in my book. There's also the direct drive extruder, which is hugely important if you're printing up different types of filaments, especially the flexible ones like uh, TPU. 
Now, admittedly, I haven't worked with TPU yet, but it's nice to know that I can, that I have a printer with a direct drive extruder instead of a Bowden tube. Um, Bowden tubes are great if you're just doing PLA plastic like this, but um, most of the other types of plastics benefit from having a direct drive extruder. The next unexpected delight for me was the flexible spring steel build sheet. Now the Ender 3 V2, the, the entry level one that I had before, had a glass build plate, which was fine, it did the job, but sometimes flat parts like this would get stuck onto that plate so hard that you'd have to use something to scrape the part off or something to get under the surface so you can break the, the, the part off of the, the glass. And that's not ideal, that would mar up the surfaces, but with a spring sheet, you literally just fold the sheet and the parts tend to pop off or loosen themselves enough where you can easily remove them without fear of breaking the part. And finally, there's the dual Z-axis motors. These are connected to precision lead screws with a synchronizing belt, which I think is really important if you want dimensionally accurate parts, like things that remain parallel and perpendicular to each other. Um, your printer can really benefit from having the dual Z-axis. These are all upgrades that you can make to the original Ender 3 V2, but the Ender 3 S1 and the S1 Pro already have all that stuff built in. So overall, I'm very happy with this printer. I think it does a good job and let's get on with the show. Okay, so let's talk accuracy. A lot of people buy 3D printers and just use them to print you know, action figures or, or objects around the house. They don't need to be highly accurate when it comes to the dimensions of whatever it is that you're, you're printing. But I'm not one of those people. I, I need parts that are going to fit inside other parts. And if I'm designing a, some electromechanical music thing, I want to make sure that all the pieces are gonna fit together nicely, right? Like for example, I've got a stepper motor that is attached to this motor mount and this gear that I printed up. All of this needs to be very precise, otherwise there's gonna be a lot of slop in the system and this plate isn't going to move smoothly. But this thing is just buttery smooth and these were all 3D printed. You need accurate hole placements so that the screws will go into the aluminum part. You need accurate hole placements here. The gear needs to have exactly the right shape and um, dimensions. And I'm very happy with how this has turned out. And this is an example of what you can do with a 3D printer these days. Now let me show you something. This calibration cube, this is designed to be exactly 20 millimeters on each side. So the X axis is 20 millimeters from here to here. The Y axis, same, it's 20 millimeters from this to this face and the Z axis, the height. So this is the bottom of the cube and this is the top. Now. I'm gonna grab my trusty mid to Toyo calipers here and actually measure this. Now, keep in mind that this cube came straight out of the machine. I have done absolutely nothing to calibrate it. I have not done anything to tune or upgrade the machine. These are things that you can and should do if you want accurate parts, but this literally came out of the machine moments after I had assembled it and started doing some test prints to see what I can get. And let's see how it measures Remember, we're supposed to get 20 millimeters on the dot on this part. We can measure it again, 19.98. Let's take a third measurement here. Again, 20 millimeters on the dot on the x-axis. Let's try the y-axis and this one is a little bit high. So nine one hundredths of a millimeter over. And let's try it from this side. Again, nine one hundredths of a millimeter, more than 20 millimeters. And the Z axis, this is the one that, that tends to trip up most printers and needs to be calibrated out. But we're getting a reading here of 20.35. Not too bad, three tenths of a millimeter off on the Z axis, which tends to be the most problematic part but all of this can be calibrated out in your slicing software. So you get really, really accurate parts. All right, so let me show you one more part. This is the part that I printed in the introduction of this video. And 
Since I designed this part, I know that this dimension from this side to this side is 132.11 millimeters. Let's see how it actually measures according to the mid tutorial calipers. 132.14. So we're 0 0.03 millimeters off of the nominal dimension, which is pretty good for melted plastic. And we can do this side as well. This side I know is 39.61 millimeters in its nominal dimension. 39.64 millimeters. So again, 0.3 millimeters off of the nominal dimensions over a distance like this. To me, this is pretty incredible. The fact that you can take plastic, melt it down, harden it back up and get stuff on this scale, on this size that is, you know, within fractions of a millimeter is incredible. It's, it's wonderful. It means you can do prototyping and build things like this and, you know, test stuff out or even build this and put this into production if you're doing small batch manufacturing. Now, when you do engineering and prototyping work, you need to have parts that fit into other parts and look at the precision with which this will fit. I mean, this it's a press fit. It's not going to go anywhere. The part is, is stuck in there and you can put the screw in the other way and you've got yourself a, a holder for a 4HP module. So as I was filming this video, I came up with an interesting use case for a 3D printer. Now, for those of you that don't know, Strange Science Instruments is my company. I run this with my brother. We design cool modules for modular synthesizers. Now, this is our F1 filter. And at the time that we were making this product, we didn't have a 3D printer. So we had to spend quite a bit of money on these front panels to test fit and make sure that everything looks good. Let me do the rapid disassembly method here. We save a lot of money with the rapid assembly and disassembly methods. So this is our filter and this is the front panel. And we have these milled in Germany and the United States for us. This is quite an expensive process, especially if you order only one of these, because ordering a single one of these is going to cost you anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks. And if you need one expedited and sent to you overnight, it can cost double that. So. These are not cheap parts. Sometimes when you're manufacturing, you just want to do a reality check. Like, is this part actually going to fit this? Like, are they going to fit like this? Um, did we place the whole centers correctly on the, on the layout file for this compared to the PCB files? It, it's good to do these reality checks. And if you have a 3D printer, you can actually just take the same file that we use to generate this, export it as a DXF, Put that DXF into Fusion 360 and then basically design this part in Fusion 360 and send this off to your printer. This thing takes about an hour to print. You can probably make it go a lot faster. I just left it at the default settings. And since it's accurate, you can see that the holes and everything line up exactly. There's, there's, it's like a perfect fit and you can use it to validate your design and make sure you haven't made any boneheaded errors. And well, look at that and put these on here just like a regular front panel, tighten these up and for example, send this off to a beta tester and not have to spend the money on this until you're sure that this is going to work the way that you want. And for that matter, you could actually print up these knobs too. You can make these and put them on here. I've done projects where you have um, a 3D printed object like this right here that you see that grub screw it the 3d printers are so accurate you can actually make a hole and leave a space for a small grub screw and then get in there and put a, a grub screw to tighten it around the shaft of a of a stepper motor or a or a knob so the fact that all of this is done straight out of the box without any fine tuning is is really excellent And so there you have it, folks. My thoughts on 3D printers and the Creality Ender 3 S1 in particular. If you haven't been able to tell, I really like 3D printers. I think they're fantastic tools for any kind of shop. If you're into any other kind of stuff I do on this channel, like prototyping or tinkering, it's a brilliant tool to have in the shop. There's so much more I wanted to share about this technology and there's so much more I wanted to show, but this video is gonna get very long if I do that. But I will show you a grab bag of, let's get this out of the way, of all the stuff. Of 
all the stuff. There's more to it. Th there's more to it than this. And I'm not gonna tell you what all this stuff is because these are parts that I might use in future videos, or these are things I might turn into products. So you've got something that might be used to say mount a motor. There's all kinds of different sized gears, little pinions, and all kinds of stuff. Maybe some some coils. So I hope you've learned something from watching this. I hope you've you've gotten something out of this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. If you're into it, maybe head over to Patreon and uh, show your support for the channel that way if you can. And I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.